For this course, we are going to use an outside guitar mold. The mold is used during the side bending process and the sound box assembly process. It also helps you mark out important dimensions in the early stages of the build. First, we will make a template. Then we will trace the template onto 3 quarter inch MDF, plywood, or particle board and cut six sections. Each section is then attached to the original template for refinement on the router table. The six sections are glued together to create two pieces. Hardware is added to hold the two pieces together and a wooden dowel is installed at the joints to keep the pieces properly aligned. Okay, now that we have a basic understanding of the steps, let's get started. For my template, I am using half of a spare OM mold that I had in my shop. But you will have to create your own template from scratch using your plans as a guide. To do this, Trace half of the guitar's outline onto tracing paper. Stick the tracing paper to 3 quarter inch particle board, MDF, or plywood with spray contact adhesive. Cut on the line with a bandsaw. I use a quarter inch blade or smaller so that it can handle the curves. Take your time and strive for consistent curves. All major inconsistencies can be smoothed out with 80 grit sandpaper wrapped around a wooden dowel. Minor inconsistencies can be ignored. As far as precision goes, the inside cut is what really counts. The outside cut can be rough cut to any shape as long as it is about 3 to 5 inches from the inside cut. Finally, drill three holes for use in mounting the template. Now this is actually just another piece from another um, mold that I have. I'm repurposing it uh, as a template for other molds. So with that in mind, yours does not need to be as bulky as this is. In fact, yours could, you could just use a single piece of 3 quarter inch plywood or something even thinner, half inch plywood would work just fine. That way you could carefully, very very carefully on a bandsaw cut out the shape as precisely as you can. Because then once you cut out that shape, we're going to use that first template that you make that should look something like this. We're going to use that first template to make uh, the other pieces for that template. There's going to be six, six pieces overall, three stacked on top of each other, as you can see here. You can see the three pieces of particle board on each side. So that'll be six total pieces, but having that template makes it real easy. We can basically make exact copies of each piece um, using the router with a guide bearing bit. So now we have our particle board out on the floor and I'm going to use this template I made here and trace out six copies of this. So instead of taking this straight to the bandsaw because it's so big and cumbersome, we're going to first see if we can cut this up just a little bit in the 
in place here using a jigsaw. You could use a circle saw. Um, if you have a, a friend with you, you can take it over to the band saw or the table saw. I'm just going to break it down first this way into some slightly smaller pieces and then uh, we can cut it on the band saw. Now these are small enough to fit in the bandsaw, so we should be good. Um, so we want to stay about 1 16th of an inch outside this line. That way when we take this over to the um, router table, we will have very little wood left over for that router bit to remove. So we'll stay nice and tight to the line. Okay, so now we're going to attach our template to the first piece so that we can clean up those, the, all, the, all these edges on the router table. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hang this over the end like that. Line this up. So that the bottom piece is overhanging just slightly everywhere. The other side, okay, both sides are clamped. Let me just look around the edge, make sure we're overhanging a little bit. Okay, that's perfect. And you'll notice I didn't drill any pilot holes, that's because I'm using particle board. If you're using particle board or MDF, you don't really need to drill a pilot hole. We can just drive these screws right through and it won't split. Okay, so we're going to use a half inch straight cut bit with a guide bearing. That's what this little wheel is right here. Okay, and so... I already have that set up in a good place. The guide bearing is up against the template. So we are ready to go. Now remove the template, attach it to the next section 
and continue routing until all six sections are complete. So we've cut six of these. I'm going to pull three over to make our first half of our mold. We're going to hang this over the edge just a little bit. And then what I first want to do is just very carefully take my time and get this lined up so that all the pieces are flush with each other. I could check that with a square or something, but I'm not going to. I can, I can just feel for any overhanging edges. That's pretty good there. And keeping that as it is, I'm going to carefully clamp this up, making sure it doesn't move. The whole purpose of this is we're going to drill two holes here so we can um, have locating screws there to keep everything in, in alignment when we glue all these pieces together. That way, well otherwise if we just put the glue on there without the locating screws, the whole thing would slide around in the glue once we uh, tried to clamp it down. So this will help us maintain alignment. Okay, no need to measure this out. I'm just going to drill somewhere. So then, these two screws are going to go in here. We're not going to put them in there just yet, because now we can take this apart and we can spread our glue. Let the glue cure overnight and now we are ready to remove the clamps and attach the hardware. Okay, we have the two pieces. Now let's just add our hardware to it. Okay, so let's get started. First thing I want to do is mark the holes for this and drill it in. So I want to set this up 
uh, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch from this edge here. The reason I'm not super precise is because this handle here is adjustable. So once we get that on, you can always adjust the tension of this arm. Let's mark the other piece, which faces this way. Okay, let's drill that. So I have the correct size bit for the screws, and I put a little flag on there as a depth stop. So I drill uh, only as far as I need to drill. Okay, now we're going to drill for the dowel, which will keep this alignment um, correct as far as side to side. You see that? If we don't put the dowel in there, it'll kind of, um, it, it can pull apart like that. So we'll put the dowel in there to keep it together. I'm going to clamp it in place at the edge of my workbench. I'm using a half inch dowel, but really you can use any size dowel, uh, as long as the bit you use matches the size of the dowel, and this does. I'm using a Forstner bit because it will leave a flat bottom. And I'm just going to rest the brad point right in on that line that separates the two pieces. Okay, I moved a little bit. Let me get more clamps on there. I'm going to set the depth of the bit. We don't want to go all the way through. I'm just going to go down most of the way. On the third, I'm going to go halfway through the third piece of plywood, or particle board. Halfway through the, the third sheet there. So, let me put a tape flag on here to mark where that will be. Yeah, it's good. Okay, let's do the other side. Bottom. I'm just going to mark this off. And I'm going to go cut that real quick on the bandsaw. Okay, and to glue this in place, very simple. I'm just going to run a bead of glue down the edge like that. Press it into place. Some wax paper over here 
so we don't glue the whole thing stuck together. And to clamp it, we can just close that up. Just like that. Okay, let that glue cure for about an hour and you're good to go. Mm -hmm.